Welcome to Topsail Insider, where you can hear all about the businesses and events in the beautiful coastal towns in the greater Topsail area of North Carolina. Coming up, no more ignoring those junk drawers, your overflowing closets, and pantries hiding expired canned goods. Let's get inspired by today's guest, a professional home organizer. From missionary work in Africa to discovering a career in home organization, Debbie Bruin will be shedding light on her process and how she can help you create your sanctuary on today's episode of Topsail Insider. Experience a new level of luxury on Topsail Island at Saltwater Suites in Surf City, North Carolina. With no nightly minimum, you can enjoy short getaways or an extended stay. Each suite features luxury bedding, full kitchens with dining tables and dishwashers, and all suites other than the three ADA suites have full-size washers and dryers. And don't forget about those beautiful ocean views. 24-7 self-check-in provides a hassle-free and seamless experience. Saltwater Suites is the perfect choice for your next beach getaway. Book your next topsail visit at saltwatertopsail.com or call 910-886-4818. Saltwater Suites, Topsail Island's premier luxury hospitality experience. Welcome everyone to Topsail Insider. My name is Krista and I am your host. Today I am interviewing Miss Debbie Bruin. She is a professional home organizer and her business is called Home Organization by Debbie. Welcome Debbie. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you, Krista. I'm happy to be here. I'm doing well. Thank you. Okay, I'm very happy to be talking to you because (laughs) I have a lot of questions. So let's just jump right in. Listeners, if you're like me and you know that your home needs some organization that you can't do because if it's a lack of time or it's a lack of energy or you don't want to because the task just seems overwhelming, you also might need some decluttering. And I think a lot of people, we just accumulate things over the years and it just builds up. But you look around and like, where did all this stuff come from? And how do I get rid of it? And there's some really good books where it's pick it up and does it make me feel good inside? right. And if it does. That's the Marie Kondo method. Yes. So you're, I'm sure you're very very, familiar with that. Do you use that? There are some things that she has that's really great advice, but oftentimes to pick up every little thing and make that decision on, (laughs) it can be cumbersome in time, but there is a certain amount of that. Yes. Your tools (laughs) in your toolbox, you need them. You know, you need them. Do you have a love affair with them? Maybe not, but you're happy when you have them. I would imagine too, after the holidays, we have collected a lot more stuff because we did a lot of gift giving and gift getting. And now we have even more stuff. So this is really good. We have Debbie here today, and she is the professional. And we're just going to find out all about her business and what she can do to help us get through the clutter and the what disorganization. Okay, so Debbie, please tell us what your job entails. I, I have never heard of a professional home organizer until I met you. Oh, so it. just tell me and listeners what your job entails and just give me a brief overview of the services that you offer. So I help my clients with the declutter process in preparation for organizing their spaces in a way that they can easily access their items and then easily put those items away. So that makes it that each organizing solution is unique to them, to their needs and to their priorities. It is intended to support their lifestyle and what they want to happen in those spaces. A lot of what I saw on your Facebook, you do the decluttering in the home organization, but you also do something called pre-pack yes. and packing, which yes. we're going to get into details mm-hmm. about that later. Yes. I also had never heard this word before until I talked to you. It's right-sizing. Right-sizing, yeah, because the word downsizing often focuses on loss, and that is not the way to focus upon it. It is Let's make room for supporting our new lifestyle that we have in mind for ourselves. Okay. So not downsizing. We're going to right size. So if you're moving from, let's say you're an empty nester, Mm -hmm. okay, you want to move into a smaller home because it's way too much to clean now. Right. And then you're going to right size them. Exactly. I love that. And then also the other aspect of it is sometimes people have moved 
and they took all their stuff with them and now they've got too much of it. Mm -hmm. So it is now figuring out what should work for them in the home now and then being able to pare down and declutter. Gotcha. You do also some office organization and file setup, but this is in a home office primarily. Correct. Yes. Okay. And you also you do help them dispose of the clutter. The, their donation afterwards. items. Yeah. So anything that fits in my van that's donatable, mm-hmm. I will bring to a donation site. I can also bring their empty boxes to a convenience center to have it like recycled. Recycle? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What are the benefits of getting your home and space organized? The greatest benefit of being organized is the feeling of peace and sanctuary for you and your family. And you have a sense of pride. If somebody all of a sudden pops up at your front door, you are more than happy to welcome them in and not feeling embarrassed about the state of your home. Just imagine that you're not yelling at your kids to put their stuff away because we have now created places for them to put their things away. So all that yelling and aggravation gets minimized. What you would do is, okay, 15 minutes before bedtime, now let's put your things away in the spaces that we have created. And it becomes more of a joy rather than a chore or a screaming match. Yeah, we tell the kids, clean up. And they literally say, mom, I don't know where to put it. Exactly. You can't make them do what you haven't set them up for success Mm -hmm. to do. I'm embarrassed a little bit right now. We've all, (laughs) we have all done it. We've all done it. One of the benefits that people don't actually think about is you end up saving money. So imagine you have a nicely organized kitchen and pantry, all right? That promotes you wanting to cook. You don't feel frazzled at the end of the day. I'm like, I'm just going to get takeout because I cannot handle cooking in this kitchen. Oh my gosh. And it also saves you from buying stuff you already have. And that is not only your pantry items and your refrigerator (laughs) items, but it could be stuff in your closet as well. Anything else in your house that you keep as supplies that you Mm -hmm. repurchase on a regular basis, if you know what you have because you can see what you have Mm -hmm. because it's organized, that makes it so that you're going to be like, you know what, I already have... 10 pounds of flour. I don't need more flour. (laughs) So that's one aspect of it. Okay. What areas of the home do you service? I love every area of the house. Anything that's causing chaos and is causing a problem, I will work on. I will even work on garages, but not in the hot weather, please. (laughs) Yeah, I can understand that. Now that I know that there are professional home organizers, can you tell me what training you get for this type of work and and how long does that take? Sure. For me, I started with an online organizing course and I started back in 2017, I want to say. And I've been uh, going through the course and then the mentorship and the troubleshooting. I continue to be part of that organization. And I also wanted to just differentiate here. This is, you're not a cleaning service. Correct. I do clean as I go. For instance, not going to put your items back on a dirty shelf. So I come prepared with some microfiber cloths right? and I clean up as best as I can. Okay. Speaking of the training, do you train your clients that you work with? So I have a teacher heart for sure. I used to homeschool my kids oh, you actually. Did? Yes. And the, the whole teachable moment kind of thing that mm-hmm. definitely carried over into my organizing because what I'm trying to do is help my clients to understand how to maintain the space, mm-hmm. how to make decisions about what to even let in through the front door. It's teaching them, helping them to understand the mindset of being organized so that they can then maintain the system themselves. Can we talk about that for just a a minute about not letting things come in the door? Because I do think that's a big problem for us, especially if you have kids. A lot of junk comes in the door. Grandparents. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Barry, okay. So can you give me a little taste of that lesson so I can take that with me? Absolutely. Before you even go out the door. Make sure you have your list in hand, even if it's clothing, because you get to the store and all of a sudden you don't remember why you're there. So have that list. This is what I'm looking for. And if you cannot exactly find it, then just 
don't buy it. Try and make do with what you already have. Because what's going to happen is you're going to bring that item home, let's say clothing item, Mm -hmm. and you're going to put it in your closet and you will find that you're not going to use it. And Mm -hmm. so now you've just added to your clutter. When you do bring something home, something fits your need, try and figure out what can then go out. I have done a one in, one out, unwritten rule, sometimes one in, two out. I've done that with shoes, shoes that I've loved. I've actually taken pictures of and said, goodbye, shoes. (laughs) (laughs) I've loved you, but they don't fit my feet anymore. My my knees have changed. Exactly. Exactly. There are times where, have you been in your closet and you'll put the a shirt on? Oh, no, that doesn't work. You put it back. And have you found that you've done it more than once? Yes, I have. Okay. Now it's time to make sure you have a brown paper bag in the corner <gasps> of your closet oh. and you fold that item up and you put it in that bag until the bag is full yeah. and then you bring it to your favorite donation center. So that's creating room now so that you could bring something in that really works for you and be Mm -hmm. just don't buy things just to buy things. Make sure you're going to really love it when Mm -hmm. you get home. Mm -hmm. Wow. When you leave, I'm going straight to my closet. (laughs) Have you ever had to return to a client? You got them all cleaned up and organized and now they kind of return to their old ways a little bit and now they want you to come back in and get them back to zero. Does that happen a lot? So I do offer a maintenance plan for my clients. Mm -hmm. However, I have not had to return back to (gasps) any of my clients. I'm thinking back to it and no, usually it's it's done. (laughs) That's amazing. What locations locally here in the greater Topsail area do you service? So I service anywhere from Jacksonville on down to Wilmington. Okay. So we're going to move on to your why. I met Debbie at a Topsail Chamber of Commerce Women Connect meeting. They happen one Thursday a month. Yes. And I overheard you say, when I lived in Africa, (laughs) and my ears went, ding. (laughs) <laughs> and you were talking about how living in different countries and different types of homes, they forced you to figure out the best way to live in these different environments. Yes. And I just found that really fascinating. And I knew in that moment that you would be someone that I wanted to talk to here. But that is not actually your why. Your why is also a very interesting story. And I want you to tell everyone how you got started in home organization. What triggered that? There was a certain point in time due to my daughter's illness that we were not able to go back to Kenya, which is where we were. We were living in Utah at the time, and she was in a wheelchair. She -hmm. also had a toddler, and she was on lots of government programs because of her illness. So there was paperwork coming in through the door like crazy. Our lives did at least three doctor appointments per week. So that's all that paperwork coming in. Plus, I had a a nighttime job where I was working in a call center, which was pretty stressful. So I was under... You were living there with your daughter? Oh, yes. We were all living together. Under the same roof? Absolutely. It was a stressful situation. She was in a wheelchair. I didn't know how to deal with the chaos. So my daughter said, hey, mom, for my birthday, can you please hire me a home organizer? I'm like, huh? What's that? (laughs) I had never heard of a home organizer. So I hired this beautiful lady named Annie. She came to the house, very calm, very peaceful. And she organized my daughter's room. She organized my granddaughter's room. She helped with the paper clutter and helped us to determine what stays and what goes took out bags and bags of garbage and the peace and the calm and the functionality, just rearranging the furniture just a little bit allowed my daughter to get into her daughter's room with her wheelchair. So it was such a peaceful result. And I thought to myself, if ever I have the opportunity to reinvent myself, I am going to learn how to do this and do this for others. And so when we moved to North Carolina, that's when I said, all right, as I was unpacking the boxes in my own house and saying, what do I want to do with my life? What makes me happy? 
and I'm happily unpacking my boxes into the new space, <laughs> not what goes where. I'm like, this is what I want to do. And so that's when I started taking the online The online courses. courses? Yes. All righty. Now, let's go talk about Africa. Sure. <laughs> yes. Please share with the listeners what took you to Africa, mm -hmm. the process that you had to go through to get to Africa, and how that helped you with what you're doing today. Right. So... My husband and I, before we were even married, actually, just felt like I was telling us we needed to work for him as missionaries in Africa somewhere. Mm -hmm. It was just a tug on our hearts that were inescapable. We moved from New York down to Tennessee, which was a cross-cultural experience for sure. <laughs> um, so we've had lots of cross-cultural, but did seminary training, met a mission organization that we really liked because their mantra was, you work yourself out of a job. You do not make people dependent upon you. And I think that's probably why I've not been having to be called oh, back because I, I work myself out of a job basically yeah. when I come to organize. And if you're able to maintain, great. Okay. Yeah. Did four years of education in Tennessee, then further training back in New York, in California, in Michigan. Mm -hmm. We raised support based out of Pennsylvania. We lived in Indiana, training, training in all these places. Okay. Mm -hmm. So constantly learning how to develop relationships, which then, of course, we learned how to develop relationships with the Turkana people. That's the name of the tribe. Turkana. Okay. Yes. We finally make it to Kenya in January of 1990. What about this language barrier that you oh, have? Oh, so one of the things that we did do training for is the LAMP method, lear learning acquisition made possible, where you have your own self-directed language learning. The idea is you hire a person in the tribe who happens to know English. And there were a few people. So we hired a man and we worked with him. Here we or there? Oh, there in there. Kenya. Okay. Yeah, in, the Tur in Turkana. Yes. So we would write out a sentence and he would translate it for us and we would watch him say it and we would tape record him saying it and we had it on a loop tape and we would look at his mouth closely and then we had a mirror up to our own mouths to oh make goodness. sure that our mouths try to form it the same way. So that's our first year and a half of living in Turkana. That's what we did. In the meantime, though, my husband was teaching. So it's a perfect way to learn the language by teaching. And that was one of the uh, really cool mantras of the LAMP method, learn a little, use it a lot. You learn a little, you use it a lot, and then you continue on the learning process. In the pre-interview, that learning this language in Kenya mm -hmm. gave you some lessons that you use now yes. with your own clients. Yes, yes. Explain that to me and the listeners. Okay, so when I am working with a client, I don't want to use my words to identify their things. I need to know how they identify their things. So it could properly label things, for instance, so that the organization system that I set up for them is made so that they could then maintain it. It's in their language. They don't have to go through the step of, what is it that she what said? Did it Debbie doesn't make mean it. by that? Yeah. yeah. So because Give me you, an example. Okay. Classification. Let's talk about classification. Let's say you have a multiple of shirts, right? So your, I might say, oh, this is a sleeveless black top. This is a short sleeve black top. And this is the long sleeve black top. Mm -hmm. But no, that's not your classification. You don't want all the sleeveless together. You want, this is a dressy top. This is a um, casual top. This is for winter. So that it makes a difference as to how we organize the things. Mm -hmm. It has to be upon your classification of the item. It has to make sense for you. So just thinking about Africa, actually, you said your plan was to retire there. Yeah, our plan was to, till we were like 65, that was mm -hmm. that plan, going from place to place until we were done, right? Mm -hmm. So that was our plan. And so when it 
became apparent that we could not go back. I suffered identity loss for sure. I didn't know who I was. The oh, morning of it. Not only was there the catastrophe of the health thing that we were going through with our daughter, the stress that places upon one's marriage. Oh, yeah. Then we're no longer employed, no longer insurance. <laughs> so, yeah. my goodness, now what? So, all of those things were going on at the same time. And it right. was quite a tumultuous time. Yeah. So, going to Africa is life changing, but also coming home <gasps> is life changing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We loved it there. We used to say it's the hardest job that you'll ever love because you're, you're on the front line and you feel like what you're doing with your life matters. Yeah. I could see that for sure. What is your biggest takeaway from the Africa experience? So biggest takeaway is be silent and observe. Don't jump in thinking you know the answers because you don't. Learn, make relationships. I feel that to my core right now. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about the services that you offer now in some detail for our listeners. Let's talk about your decluttering and home organization. Yes. Decluttering can be difficult, especially when there are some sentimental reasons that we hold on to things. So how do you address this with your clients? So before we even start, I make sure I understand them and what their goals are. Because when you're in the thick of the decluttering process, you forget why you're doing what you're doing and it just mm. becomes overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm the voice of clarity for them. I hold up to them. This is what your goals are. Going to be okay. We will get through this and try to help them with humor. I use humor a lot, mm -hmm. gentle, non judgmental. Or we will just set something aside to make the decision later. It's often easier to do that. And then w once you're pretty far through the process, you see how much you have of something. And then all of a sudden, it's, you know what? I can release that. You also mentioned that this is a very decision heavy process yes. for your clients and how long you can work with a client before you break for the day. Please explain right. to us how you manage that timing right. with your clients and with yourself. Right. So what you're talking about is decision fatigue. And it is hard in the beginning. That's why I try to choose easier areas first, like clothing, because it's so much easier to make those decisions than, say, working on sentimentals. Sentimentals are hopefully towards the end. I look for natural breaking points in the process. They always present themselves. Mm -hmm. Normally, what I have found, it's anywhere between the three, three and a half, four hour mark. They are exhausted. And there happens to be a natural breaking point. Like we, we got this particular area done and it doesn't make sense to try and tackle something right. else. However, when you're like, under a hard deadline, we plow through okay. seven, eight hours because okay. we have to. Somebody's house is going to be gone from them. Sold. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you have to do it. You know? I'm noticing like you seem to take on a little bit of a therapist role here when it comes yes. to the decluttering process. Yeah. Explain the importance of decluttering with your client there and present with you yes. when you do your home organization? There are organizers that can do decluttering without the client there if they have the parameters, right? And I can do the same thing and then put a bin of things that I decided fit their parameters so that they can have the final say. However, I really like working through the process with my clients Oftentimes, I find that we can let go of more things if I am with them through that process. And gotcha. it is during that process that I learn how they view their items and I learn what they call their items. Mm -hmm. So that makes it so that I know how to organize the items once we're done with this declutter process. I understand now what they want to access more often. Gotcha. 
And so I organize so that the accessibility is at the prime real estate is what we call it. Right. (laughs) Okay. And we talked a little bit about the sentimental parts of this, but a lot of these items are also very personal. You're going into our the deep recesses of yes. our closets right, and yes. the drawers. And so how do you handle confidentiality? How right. do you yes. reassure someone like this is just between us? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, I do. I, I did have the experience where I was doing most of the handling and holding up for my client, but then I hit a drawer and I realized, <laughs> I saw the look on her face. I said, how about you go through that drawer and I will hold the bag for you. And that worked out well. But when I go through like people's financial statements and things like that, I use what I call my subway face. When you're on the subway in New York City, you're staring, you're looking across at somebody, (laughs) but you don't see them. You got that kind of blank subway face. Subway face is what I I call it. um, But yes, I do confidentiality, complete confidentiality. Okay. Let's go to your Mm prepacking and unpacking, because I had never thought of this service, especially the prepacking process before doing a move. Yeah. Yeah. So oftentimes when you're getting a house ready for sale, you have to depersonalize it anyway, right? Might as well get that done beforehand so that it's ready for the pictures. So I help with the declutter process for that. And then once we determine what are you going to keep, what are you taking to your new house, but you're not ready to do a full pack yet Mm -hmm. because you still have to live in this house. Those are the items that I will pack. I just thought, especially when you're preparing the house to be seen. Yes. Okay. Yes. That uh, the the real estate agents do come and they say, you need to declutter this place. And I totally get that and make it not personal, take down photos and whatever. Exactly. I just assumed everyone put those items in a box and just like that's going in the truck for the move. You're saying, no, let's go ahead and declutter that right now. Right. That costs you money. (laughs) I just remembered a move that I made. We we did the U-Haul thing ourselves and we didn't figure out the right footage. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we ended up giving a lot of ways that someday, you know. Oh, before Uh, you even left, you couldn't get it on the truck. Yeah, exactly. So my point is do the decluttering if you have the luxury of time, because sometimes you got to get up and move and you have no choice in the matter. And it's just too difficult to make those decisions. But if you have the time, let me come in, help you with that process and do, you know, we have too many knickknacks also. We have to reduce that so that people can imagine their items there. And also the other thing is when somebody opens up your cabinets, which they're going to do, it would be good if they could see 20% space. Because if they see that it's overflowing, they're going to say, oh my gosh, there's not enough storage in this place. Mm -hmm. I can't possibly get my stuff in here. So all of those factors go into the pre-pack service that I do. So now you've done the pre-pack, but Mm -hmm. you're talking about the unpacking process on the other end. How do you help with that? So it's a matter (laughs) of just unpacking in a way that will work for how the people want to live in their spaces. It takes some fooling around with. It does take some um, fine tuning for sure. And then I will oftentimes notice that, oh, you could really benefit from this organizational item. And so in order to maximize the space, I will make product recommendations and have them purchase the items. They make the final decisions what they want, purchase the items, and then I can arrange the items with those organizations systems in place. I'm glad you brought that up. So you make item recommendations. Like, hey, I've worked with this before. This really worked for a client. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could consider this. Right. What about bigger things? Like we need to rebuild this closet system in here. How do you handle that? Yeah, it, it depends upon the individual client. But if they say oftentimes the builder grade stuff is so bad. So yes, I have done where I have recommended pulling out those items. And then what I will do is find floor based off of Amazon or Wayfair, that kind of stuff, and maximize those space in the closet Mm -hmm. for the needs of the person there. 
What about in the pantry? Mm. Because it's pretty. A lot of people like to get the the containers for the flour and the sugar and the yes. thing and make their pantry really pretty because we all have Pinterest, right? We know <laughs> what, the, yes. what the ideal pantry looks like. Mine doesn't look anything like that. But do you make recommendations for stuff like that? If that's the look that they want to go for, absolutely, I will. My philosophy on pantries is let's reduce the steps. Can we just like line it up in some baskets and then put a little label on the front of the basket telling me what's in there kind of thing? Because when you look at the Pinterest, it's just not oftentimes reality. You you look at it and and they've got like a few food items and they're all the same item. Oh, how pretty it looks. It's so but clean it's and so pretty. Real. And I'm like, there's it's no way she's life. cooking at it for, from exactly. items from that pantry. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we, we, we let's take the staging out of there. Right. What does it look like after the staging is gotcha. done? And so my philosophy is utilitarian. Mm-hmm. I could make things look pretty if you want acrylic bins. If you want basket bins, I love those Mm -hmm. that I can do. And if you want to decant, I'm happy to decant all day long. If you're serious. (laughs) If you're going to continue doing that. If you're going to continue doing that. Okay. Yes. Understood. Thank you. Beyond baskets and containers, if Mm -hmm. it is a bigger closet system you don't do any of that installation right right? you like this is what you might want to purchase if that's what you want to purchase you do it i have a guy that can help you right right you have a guy i have a a guy that can do the putting together of furniture and things like that type stuff he'll drill holes into walls and whatnot Okay. Yeah. I don't know. See, when, when you rip out a closet, you have to prep those walls. Yes. I don't think that is in his belly wick. Okay. You may have to find, or I can help you find somebody to patch up the holes, mm-hmm. prime and paint. And he is not in your service. He is booked separate from Correct. your service. Exactly. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. And then just going back to items that are disposed of, if they've done a lot of decluttering Mm -hmm. and they have this stuff sitting there, you could put it on the curb, but why don't you? Why don't you let them dispose of their own (laughs) stuff? Yeah, it is because I have found that people will go shopping in their donations (laughs) and bring it back (laughs) into their house. (laughs) Yes. I've decided I really don't want to get rid of that thing. Did she leave yet? Because I'm going to go bring that back. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, There's that. And and no, I just like to give the sense of lightness. I've never thought about putting something at somebody's curb unless it was a gar- bag of garbage in their garbage bin. But Because yeah. it's really hard to sit back and look at all the work you just did when you look that way and it's yes. all sitting right there yeah, still. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so exactly. Like, that heaviness is still there. Right. I want that heaviness gone. Gone. I yes. love it. Okay. Let's talk about the right sizing mm-hmm. as a separate service for you. So I imagine that this is a lot, going back up to a lot of the, the pre-packing and the unpacking, Right. But is there more you want to say about right sizing? Just the fact that it's time to think about what lifestyle do you want to live? What new interests do you have? Mm -hmm. Let's make room for those interests. What do you no longer do? What no longer serves you? These are the questions that we ask in order to make those decisions about decluttering, paring down. And then allowing for new things to come into your life. It has to support what your vision for your future is, the new chapter in your life. Speaking about the new chapters of your life, we're talking about, I would imagine that right sizing is for empty nesters, perhaps. Whether they're moving to a new place or not, having your kids move out of the house gives you a new way to utilize the space that they were using. Yeah. Okay. And then thinking about divorcees, perhaps maybe let's get rid of the old memories and hurt to pain, pain. make room for light and love. Maybe Mm -hmm. widowers, do you deal with widowers? That must be really painful as well Mm -hmm. to do yourself. Having someone like you come in and help with that process might ease it a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because oftentimes men, women, especially the older generation fell into the traditional roles Mm -hmm. where it was usually the woman who took care of the house. Absolutely. The man, he was out making the money. 
And now this is a new role for him. And he doesn't know. He doesn't know which end is up. Right. So, yes, it is a helpful service for them to have somebody to come in, find out what he wants, what his goals are, not to be told. In order for him to maintain it, he has to have input into it. So Mm -hmm. I would help direct him, pull out those goals from him and how he wants to live, how he wants to cook, how whatever, and organize for him the same way I would organize for anybody else. Yeah. But most of your clients are women, are they not? Yeah, they are. Um, Oftentimes they don't have any family Generally, women outlive the men. Right. So that's why it seems to be more of the women who 25 years worth of stuff still has the husband's stuff there. Yeah. Has to work and wade through all of that. Doesn't have family. And then sometimes family can just muddy the water anyway because the emotions are so tied into everything. It's oftentimes best to have family to be able to support with the making of those decisions. They are trying to override the client's decision making and it could be a traumatic hot mess really. So yeah. I didn't think about that. A lot of times um, after the death of one parent, the kids do come in and they're trying to help. Sure. They're definitely trying to help, but you're dealing with a person that's been around the sun many years. Yes, exactly. And they have their own life and their own way of doing things. And having all this help all of a sudden probably feels very frustrating. Right. And and yeah. then, you know, they have to go through the mourning process sure. and everybody goes through that mourning process in their own way. I so keep it sensitive for the kids too. They're going through their own yes. mourning process yeah. as well. I don't know. It's a, that's a delicate situation. It, it, it totally is. Yeah. But I think a Debbie could come in there and yeah. really help, help smooth them. that over. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Bachelors probably need your service. Yeah. I, 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 I have <laughs> actually, he wasn't a bachelor, but his wife had to move to their new place. And he was stuck holding the bag and mm-hmm. did not have the time whatsoever to pack. It wasn't much to pack, but I was able to tie up all those loose ends for him. And that that was a good project. Someone who is going through a depression Mm. or is ill and just either they can't get up and do things with their illness or they are in a deep depression. You don't want to get up and do anything. Nothing. I've been there. So I think having this service for those clients as well is probably very beneficial. Yeah. Absolutely. The overwhelming clutter is oftentimes an outward sign of what's going on on the inside. And if you try to declutter before they're emotionally ready for it, you end up doing more harm than good. The person themselves has to be the one who says, I am ready. I am to a point where now I can receive the help that I need just to get me over the hump of whatever the outward clutter is, the Mm -hmm. the decision-making and everything like that. It's delicate. You can't do it, quote unquote, to somebody until they are absolutely ready. Otherwise, you could end up with failure and and more harm. Mm, I didn't think about it that way. Okay. Your office organization Mm -hmm. and your filing setup. Tell me what your process is there when you're setting up or coming in and helping someone reorganize their home office. What I do is I assess their needs based upon what they currently have and what their process of working in their office is. And then I try to streamline those steps so things don't take so long. I look for Easy access to a garbage bin, a recycle bin, a paper shredder, easy access to a file cabinet if that's what they need, easy access to their what you call a hot file, hot the things files, that yeah. you are mm-hmm. working on regularly. Key, yes. Yeah, yeah. Often. It's it's not for reference, but it's actual for active work on mm-hmm. making the place look nicer helping them to set it up so that they want to be in that office in the first place. Because right. sometimes it's just such a mess. You don't even want to be in there kind of thing. My, my dad's desk growing up was, it was a big desk. It was covered from yes. corner to yeah. corner in papers. Okay. He knew where 
exactly. everything yes. was. <laughs> we would call him a piler. And so what you can do is you can actually set up organization systems to to benefit somebody who likes to pile their things. I did not know there was a term for that. I, 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 I love too it. am a piler. <laughs> I'm you? a piler as well as a file. I have a love affair with my filing cabinet. I just love my file cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the most important piece of furniture in my entire house. But yes. <laughs> but you're also a piler. I'm also a piler. Yes. I am too, I guess. Probably got yeah. that from him. I, I like to see my work. But the problem is you forget underneath. Mm-hmm. Having a stacking system would be what would benefit that. So you can see and not forget, you know, even people who don't have offices need a system of some kind to process the paper that's coming into the house. So I can help them with that as well. I want to ask if this is a service that you could gift someone. Just like the person who's in depression and isn't ready to receive being organized yet to give somebody organization that they don't want yet could be a waste of time. I would say if somebody wanted it, then Mm -hmm. it would be a perfect thing to gift. Okay. Yes. As yeah, I I would certainly create a gift certificate for somebody who wanted to gift some hours to. If I really hinted to my (laughs) boy, I sure wish I could get a home organizer in here. (laughs) My daughter did actually. (laughs) Okay, fine. Yeah, that's right. Your daughter did that. That's how this whole thing. For my birthday. Yes, for my birthday, I want the gift of organization. I won't hint. I'll be very direct. Yes, you have to be. (laughs) Okay. So let's review. You have packages Mm -hmm. that you offer. Let's talk about the packages and review pricing on those. So you mentioned you do free discovery calls. We start the process by somebody contacting me through, there's two ways to contact me through my website. You can get onto my scheduler or you can submit a contact form. Okay. And I will call you and we will just discuss what your needs are. And you are free to ask me all the questions that you want. And if we both feel that the next step would be beneficial, then I would schedule a one hour, one, one and a half hour in-home assessment where you would show me what your problem areas are. And I would see the flow. I always ask My prospective clients, I don't want you to clean. I want everything the way it is. Oh, that's hard. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but otherwise, how do I know? How can I see? And from that and from hearing what your goals are, I would make a recommendation as to how many hours I believe that the project might take. Mm -hmm. I, I sell packages of hours, 12 hour, 24 and 36 hours. And that Mm -hmm. represents a 10, 15 and 20% discount off of my rate. And those packages are payable full upfront in order to get those discounts. Gotcha. So the discovery call is free. Yes. The in-home consultation is Mm -hmm. how much? That's $70. And on your website, the the 12 hours is called Clarity, Mm -hmm. the 24 hours is called Serenity, and the 36 hours, which I'm sure must be like wonderful. And it's properly named Sheer Bliss. Yes. So. <laughs> and you also mentioned on your website that you do four hour sessions. Yes, but what, what is a mini session? Minimum. What is that for? What do you need that for? Or is that in addition to we're out of time, I need four more hours? Or is it like I will just come in for four hours and do this one little task? It is for somebody who doesn't want to commit to a full package. Mm-hmm. So I have a four hour minimum okay. for organizing. And then we just go through the normal declutter and organization, which just depends upon the area. But oftentimes it's a way for somebody to know. A little if they, trial run. Exactly. Okay. If they like you, if they want to commit to something larger. Yes. Gotcha. You said you require payment up front. Mm-hmm. But for the four hour thing, it would be at the end of the organizing session. I wanted to ask, looking back on your clients that you've worked with, are there any success stories, Mm -hmm. something that touched your heart or had a very positive impact on that person that really stand out to you? And then if so, how do these stories motivate you in the work that you do? So I think about a lady who was under a severe time crunch. Her real estate agent 
had accelerated the timeline of the sale of her house. And she was completely overwhelmed and didn't know where to start. And we're talking about 25 plus years of stuff. Her husband had passed away and he was a collector. So we had to downsize her because she was moving to another state to be close to family. So we had a lot of stuff to sift through. And I packed up the things that she was going to take with her. And I arranged for a disposal company to help remove the large amount of items that she no longer needed. Was it like furniture or was it just a real accumulation a of real stuff? real accumulation. We're, we're just talking about massive amounts of stuff. Gotcha. So I culled through, figured out what she was bringing. The disposal company came in, they did their part. Uh-huh. And then a moving company came in, which she hired. And they did the packing of the glassware and the pots and pans that were going. So after that move, she was so happy. She was happy with the recommendation that I had made. She was happy with what I had done for her. Mm -hmm. And we kept in communication for a good year after that move. Mm -hmm. And the lightness to see her go from the heavy, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? This is overwhelming. To yeah. see her go from that to this light, happy, joyful person. I love it. That was, to me, that, that's living. That's living. When yeah. you can help somebody like that, that's, that's living. That would make me feel incredible, too, mm-hmm. seeing that transition in a person. Do you see that transition often? Like how, at the end of all of these sessions that you have with your clients, do you <laughs> see that lightness? So... Yes, I do. However, I wish that I had more time with them because oftentimes, you know, people will have you in for just a shorter amount of time rather than the full time. For financial reasons. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes, yes. It would be because of that. And so the joy of them, they'll get up and just take a look at their closet, just stand in their closet. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah. And with time, they can have me come back and target another part of their house yeah. kind of thing. That's how it often is. Yeah. But I love seeing the joy, the, the reunification with their items. Oh, I forgot that. I forgot that. Mm-hmm. Those sorts of things. It's just, it is very rewarding for sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Before we finish up, I like to ask What is the one thing that you want listeners to know about you, Mm -hmm. Debbie, or your business? Right. So I want people to know that what is important to you is important to me. I'm not there to get rid of your stuff. I'm not there to force you into any decision that you don't want to make. Mm -hmm. I'm there to support you in the decisions and in the vision that you want to have for your life. And I will help you, guide you through that process. It's going to be uniquely you. I'm not going to come and say, oh no, we're going to do it this way because that's not your culture. I'm there to learn your culture. I'm there to learn your language. I'm there to support you in what your goals are. And that's me. That's my business. Wonderful. I am so glad that you decided to come on this show with me. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Me. I have learned a lot. Fun. I feel very motivated. <laughs> I'm going to start clearing out some things and I'm going to ask for a gift certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, though. I appreciate you it's, having me on the show. You're welcome. It's truly my pleasure. So I'm going to give out her contact information right now. The phone number is 919 919- Four three five seven eight six eight. Her website is www.homeorganizationbydebbie.com and her email address is homeorganizationbydebbie at gmail.com. You can find and follow Home Organization by Debbie on Facebook. Thank you listeners for joining me today in this new year, in this new season in 2024. I wish you all the very best and I do thank you for your support. And uh, thank you again, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you for being on Topsoil Insider and telling us all about Home Organization by Debbie. Hey, if you enjoyed today's episode of Topsoil Insider, please show your support by clicking the follow or subscribe button on your favorite podcast listening platform. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. 
Please also go to topsoulinsider.com and join our mailing list by clicking on the Make Me a Topsoul Insider button. While you're there, you can click the Send Me a Voicemail button and let me know exactly what you're thinking. Your message just might be on an episode of Topsoul Insider. You can email me at Krista at topsoulinsider.com or call or text me at 910-800-0111. Thank you for listening and supporting Topsoul Insider and our local businesses and nonprofits. These are our neighbors and our friends, and together we build a mighty and a beautiful community I'm super proud to be a part of. I'll see you around Topsoil.